Now, before I start, while I was running this in, I found there was a little problem with the valve gear linkage, just due to the length of some parts. Occasionally, this long rod would lift up and allow this one to come around back to the other side, and that also caused the potential for binding and even stalling. So I soldered in these two little metal pieces to help prevent that. They seem to be working so far, but we'll see how that holds up. Now, getting out the components needed, that'll of course be the main body right here. And this has its extra boiler weights wrapped up in those paper pieces there. And then this should be all the main body castings. And then the tender body, which looks pretty good. And I believe I'll also be needing both front and rear trucks at this point, so I'll get those out. So let's get these weights out of here. There it goes. The paper's kind of caught inside. Okay, so these two pieces. They fit together like this, possibly the other way around. Is it this way? Yeah, this feels like a better match. Although the taper seems to be going the other way, so I think this is right. Okay, yeah. And then these fit into the body, starting from the firebox, just where the opening is largest, and then slide them forward. And... Yeah, they fit in there just like that, while allowing a large room in the back for the motor. So before installing those weights, the first thing to do is to clean all the flash off of the boiler. So most of this should be easy, but there is one large seam right here in the middle where there's some rivet detail. So I'm going to have to be careful filing around that to make sure I don't lose any of that. Although some of it will get covered anyway just by the... Uh, top hatch detail. I'm not really seeing any pits or anything that need filling, so that's good. We'll see how it looks after filing the seam off though. Let's just go at it carefully, making sure not to damage anything else around the seam. There's also a bit of that going up the cab, but it looks like there's no detail there. So that makes that easy to file down. And when you're getting rid of a seam, you really do want to make sure that there's nothing left of it and that you file smoothly around it, even filling and sanding where needed, because any small imperfection that you leave behind will show up through the paint. Okay, just looking at the reflection there, it seems like there is a small amount of pitting right here. So I'll fix that once the rest of the body is smoothed out. For these round areas, I'm just kind of using a rounded motion like this to try and follow the curve. And sometimes uh, go opposite of the curve a little bit just to help keep things as smooth and even as possible. I have a lot of the boiler pretty well smoothed out now. There are some areas like this where I'm going to do a little additional filling and then sand it down to make sure it's nice and smooth. Basically anywhere you can see where the file hasn't reached is a spot where it's better to fill and sand down than to just keep on filing and filing because um, the more you file, the more it's going to flatten out on top. And you kind of want to keep the original shape as much as possible. And then there are other areas that have just a bit of extra flash around them, like sometimes these boiler bands, other meeting points can have just a small amount, so that's pretty easy to file down. You just uh, take your file and go across it gently until those bits of flash are cleaned off. You don't have to go hard against it because typically really thin flash comes off very easily. And for small areas like the cab windows, 
you want to have a smaller file, like the square one here. A lot of times the uh, larger amounts of flaps can just kind of bend and break out. But there's still some smaller bits in there that have to be cleaned out. Let's just go at it carefully. You don't want to do too much since these are thin details like the post in the middle of the window. So it's pretty easy to file off too much if you're going at it without any sort of care. But there's still some flash left inside. So for that, I'll take the larger file and just uh, go at it this way. Sometimes you have to go back and forth with files a little until finally it breaks the pieces out. And then you can really get it smoothed out. Those should be weak at this point, so I'm using more of a pulling motion instead to help thin out that small amount of metal left that's holding the flash in place. Now for curved areas like this, you can scrape out some of the flash using the flat file, but to really get it cleaned up, it's best to use a round file. That lets you keep the shape of the area a lot better. When filing certain areas, sometimes it's extremely difficult or even impossible to smooth out a seam without losing some of the rivet detail around it. When that happens, though, something that we have to repair that is three-dimensional rivet decals from Micromark. So later on, I'll be able to repair some of this lost detail, and if done right, it should be just about unnoticeable that there's any difference at all. Most of the filing is done now, so I'm just going to work on filling in some of the little pits that are around here to really get it as smooth as possible. There are plenty of products out there that you can use for this, but what I like to use is some liquid super glue. So I'll just uh, fill that up a bit, touch up these little spots, anywhere that the file couldn't quite reach. Okay. And now, using a knife, I'll just uh, gather a little bit of baking soda, put that on, and kind of spread it across. I'll do that a couple times. The baking soda will harden the super glue extremely quickly. And that creates an extremely hard and sandable surface. So I'll just get off the excess. And now file a little bit. The excess comes off very quickly, but it leaves behind the hard stuff that you really want inside of the pits and makes it real smooth. And then to finish that off, Take a bit of sandpaper, just go around it, make sure it's as smooth as possible. Now that's nice and smoothed out. And just check over that to make sure the glue and baking soda held in place, that all the pits are filled. After doing the filing and sanding, let's go over the whole area slowly with your fingertip and your nail, and you'll be able to feel if there are any pits left or anything that needs any filling. I do feel just a bit more in this seam area, so I'll go over that a second time. And this pit could use a little more material, so I'll add some there too. But the rest of that seems to be pretty good. I think I've done about all I can with cleaning up the boiler at this point. So now I'm just going to take out the rest of the main boiler castings and give them the same kind of cleanup to get them ready.
So there's quite a bit of flash around some of these parts, but because of where the flash is, it's actually pretty easy to clean up. Just go in and file out each of those openings. Get it nice and smooth. Sometimes some of these parts will have small holes that aren't quite open. And these are pretty easy to open up. All you need is the tip of a round file or a drill bit, but I like to use a file. So you can just kind of twist it around in there a little bit. And that takes care of any flash that's on the edges. Once the parts are cleaned up, let's check their fit to make sure there are no problems. And it looks like this one's ready to use. Sometimes while testing the fit of certain parts, you might find they have a tab on the bottom that has to go into a hole that it doesn't quite fit. So there's just a little gap left in there. Instead of trying to file around the tab though, what you can do is you can open up the hole that it goes into a little more you can do this with a file or with a drill. Either way works. All you've got to do is make sure that's open enough for the part to fit in without any problems. It's already going on a little better. So I'll just do a bit more and that'll be ready to install. And then when cleaning up some of these small round parts, especially the ones that are made of white metal like this, just go across very gently Kind of a rounded motion. Very gentle filing will take off the seam and make the part look that much better. Now some parts have very large meeting areas like the boiler front here and for these you want to make sure, especially sure, that they are as flat as possible so that they have as good of a meeting point as possible. Looking close, you can see that it's almost ready to use, but there's still just a slight bit of wobble in there that's letting this shift from left to right. So for that, what I'm doing is filing down the middle of the boiler, just like this. And as I do more there, I'll check the front plate again and make sure that it has a good flat meeting. I think I have everything pretty well ready to use now. So for any details that I don't want to be in the same color as the part of the body where they'll be installed, I'm just gonna set them aside for now. So that includes some of these brass parts like the whistle and pop valves, the bell, which will be painted brass, and then some other little things here and there. So I'll only be installing these parts for now. And then the rest of the parts, I'll paint those by hand and install them after the boiler has been painted. So before installing the boiler castings, they recommend in the manual installing the boiler weight. So I'll glue these two halves together. Just put a bit of super glue around there. That'll hold it. Make sure this is lined up as straight as possible and hold those two pieces together until they've got a good bond. Sometimes it happens quickly, sometimes it takes a moment for the glue to really set in, since there are quite a few gaps between the two sides that you can see. But as long as they hold together, that's all it needs. It's starting to feel pretty strong now. So this will go in starting at the cab and firebox area and slide forward and then fit in just like that. And that meets around the bottom from the look of it, so that's where I'll be putting the glue to hold it in place. So some glue around here, a little more around here. And then a little line there. And put it back in the same way, making sure not to get any glue on myself. Just let that drop in. And I'll give that a couple minutes to set. 
Before I start working on anything else, the first thing I want to do is put on the cab back plate and make sure this is going to fit well with the chassis. So this is held on by two small screws. One goes here. The other goes over here. These have to be tightened in with a small flat blade screwdriver. These screws self-tap a little bit into those holes, so they're a little harder to turn than some others. All right, now with those in place, I'll just take the chassis here, put that over the top, line up that slot, place that down over the front if I can. Looks like my new gearbox is actually blocking the boiler weight a little bit though. So I'm going to have to do a bit of filing in there to make sure that there's good clearance. Actually looking a little closer, it would seem that the top of my motor housing is touching the inside of the boiler, so I'm also going to have to file that down. Alright, so after filing down the top of the motor there, and then grinding out some of the metal from inside of here, I've got a good fit now with metal to metal contact at the front. So now I think I'm ready to move forward. Well, the next things they say to put in in the manual are the boiler back head and the cab floor, but I'm actually going to leave those off completely until after I've painted the main color onto the boiler. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the uh, smoke box front on, put a little glue around the inside of it, then push that onto the front. Make sure no glue seeped out, which putting it on the inside helps a lot with preventing that. Now that's on nice and firm. Next is this part. Let's put some glue onto the tab there. Push that down. Make sure it's straight. That looks pretty good. And there's also this long pipe that goes along with that. You definitely want to check the fit of this one beforehand, which I've already done. So this inserts into the front of the previous part. Go. push that down firmly, add on the domes, and this dome here has one small hole in it, which you can see right there, you want to make sure that is facing towards the back, since the whistle mounts into that. sand dome. Actually for this one, instead of just the one drop on the tab, since it's bigger, I'm also going to put a little drop here and here. So that'll make sure it holds as firmly as possible. And now this part here, the hatch that fits onto the top of the cab, the holes were actually drilled off-center and that's causing it to sit at an angle instead of in the direction it's supposed to be. Since this is white metal, it'll be really easy to just trim off one of these tabs and file it smooth. These white metal parts can be really delicate, so you have to make sure they stay nice and straight. Be careful not to handle them. Okay, so now I can glue this down while making sure it's perfectly aligned. Once that's set, make sure those guide rails are as straight as possible. Now 
I want to make sure these are flush with the surface as much as possible. Okay. And to make sure those won't bend out of place by accident, you can just use a little needle or wire with some liquid super glue on it. Spread that into there. A bit of excess there can be smoothed out with a sanding tip. Those little drops of glue spread on the inside will keep these firmly in place and make it a lot harder to damage or bend them by accident. Now opening up the second detail bag. This has some of the really large parts in it, like the walkways. This is kind of a unique feature that I think Bowser got from uh, carry after they acquired the line of bodies from them. So instead of casting the walkways onto the boiler, they come as separate parts made from stamped out and formed brass, and then they're screwed in place. To look as good as possible, you do want to make sure that these bins are as straight and clean as they can be. So you can kind of squeeze around there and flatten them out a little with pliers. Smooth jaw on the inside. Then while holding tightly, give it a real firm press to make sure that you have as good of a 90 degree angle as you can get. So once that's all straightened out, these mounting tabs need to be bent into position. So just give that a good firm hold. And it helps to use two sets of pliers to start the bend. And give that a good, firm push down. I'll have to do more work with this. But it just needs to be bent to an angle that can allow it to mount correctly to the boiler. And further straightening and angle adjustment can be done after that. Now insert the walkway into the slot. Make sure that has a good fit where it needs to go. And tighten it down with these small 080 screws. And the second one goes right in here. Gently screw that in, making sure it's nice and straight. Okay, now the walkway is on, and further straightening can be done to make it just right. Now that the main walkway is nice and straight, I'm going to get started on the short front walkway pieces here. There's one for the left side, and then another one, slightly different in shape, that fits to the right. So the one on the left actually mounts to the larger walkway, but the one on the right um, instead just fits on its own to a couple mounting holes you can see here. These are both lost wax parts instead of just a uh, sheet metal. So they're going to take a bit of filing and clean up before they're ready to go. You can see just a few spots around there from where the metal was kind of poured in and allowed to vent. So I'll file those off. Okay, I think I've got that cleaned up pretty well. So before I put that on, I'm actually going to take the large walkway back off. This is going to make the uh, installation of the short one a little easier. And getting this one back on shouldn't be so bad now that I've got it kind of set straight where I need it to be. Okay, you can see the uh, two screw holes right there. Those are threaded for the uh, 080 screws that they include, the short ones. So that fits right there, just like that. Doesn't feel perfectly flat. So before I put the screws in, I'm just going to take my smooth pliers and kind of press those together a little. Try and help with the fit, make it a little flatter. All right, so now use these tiny screws. I'm only going to screw this in a few turns though, not all the way. Just enough to hold it in. OK, 
Okay, you can see that the screws are kind of poking through the edge, but I still have quite a bit of space there. And that's just what I want for the moment. The reason for that is so that I can put a drop of super glue right there in the middle. Pretty good sized drop, because I want that to spread through the screw holes too. Okay, get that right there. Spread that around a bit. Now I'll tighten it together. Okay, all together now. So I'm gonna give the glue a bit of time to set. And then once that's dried out, I'll file down the tops of the screws so that they're nice and flush with that. Okay, I think I can work on filing these down now. And it might be easier to use a cutting wheel or grinder, but because the metal's so thin and right in a visible area, I think it'll be better to use a file here because I don't want to accidentally slip and then leave a big mark there. So this will take it down slowly, but in the end it'll be nice and flat and should look very clean. That turned out looking pretty good. But to really perfect it, I'm also going to fill in that crack there and sand that nice and smooth, and then that should give it a really nice seamless look once it's painted. Okay, it might not be completely perfect, but I think that'll look pretty good when it's all painted. So before I reinstall this, last thing to do is add this toolbox onto that little mounting hole near the front. A little drop of glue. Push that through. Once the glue is set, I'll file that tab flush with the bottom and reinstall that to the boiler. Getting things tightened down now. There, that's one walkway complete. So now I'll do the same for the other side. As I get ready to mount that right side short walk to the boiler, I noticed one thing that was sort of illustrated but not really described in the manual was that this end of the right side long walkway needs to be bent down. And looking at the illustration, that's right about where the uh, smoke box meets the main boiler. So I'm just going to use that as a reference there to make a little score mark. So now I'll take the walkway back off. And then being careful to make sure that I'm holding it perfectly straight at that marked line. I need to bend this down a sharp 90 degrees. Just like that. It can take a lot of pressure to get a really good 90 degree bend. And sometimes you might even have to work at it a couple times to be sure. Now that's screwed in place. So I just need to make sure that the two pieces meet each other. They actually used a very soft grade of brass for the short walkways, which means that it's pretty easy to just uh, bend it where you need. In fact, in the instruction manual, they say to just uh, bend it because it's so soft. Now, since that's such a small point where those two parts meet each other, I think I'm going to try soldering the two. I've already filed a little bit here just to kind of get rid of some oxidation. But since the metal's been around a while, I'm also going to put a drop of flux on there. I'll use the large tip of my soldering iron. Heat that up. And hopefully the solder will melt into that joint and make it nice and strong. And it looks like I did get a bond there, so now um, I'll just take the walkway back off real quick, file that smooth, and then put it back on. So aside from the handrails, these are the detail parts still left to put onto the boiler. However, aside from these three, 
I'm going to leave the others off until after I've done the main colors of the painting because that'll actually make the painting process easier. So putting these parts on is real easy. Just put a drop of glue on the tab, maybe one more where it touches the boiler just to help keep it a little stronger and more stable. This inserts into here. I almost forgot I left that on there for some test fitting. Need to glue that in place. So just to those two tabs there. Press that back in. And then there's this small tank here, which just has one tab mounting it. It fits underneath the walkway in that little corner. Just like that. Then this part goes on the back plate of the cab. Since I have the back plate on there already, this will be easier to put on with pliers. So just grip that. And I'll do a quick test fit here, and yeah, that's just fine. Put that down in the hole. Again, make sure it's straight. And there, that looks good. Now, even though I'm not going to actually install the handrails, I am going to do some test fitting and shaping as long as I have the boiler off. Got a whole bunch of brass stanchions there. And Belzer always puts the uh, handrail wire inside of the box underneath the foam. So there's that piece there. It's even got a bend in the front already. It's not really a perfect 90 degree bend, but I can finish with shaping that while I'm putting it onto the boiler and making sure it's uh, the correct curvature to go around the smoke box. First thing to do though, is insert each of these stanchions into the holes of the boiler. I'm not gonna glue them. I'm just doing some test fitting and shaping, like I said before. While I was putting those stanchions in, I realized that the holes that were pre-drilled for them are actually just slightly undersized. A bit unusual for a Bowser kit, but sometimes little mistakes like that happen. So I'm using this uh, 0.9 millimeter drill bit to expand the holes, and this should make them just perfect for those stanchions. And before I thread the handrail through there, it may be pre-bent at the front with the curve, but they didn't really get some of these bends very sharp. So I'm grabbing that with pliers and then just uh, changing that to a better 90 degree angle. Doing that for both sides. And then I'll also work on the curvature of that end there so that it matches up to the shape of the boiler better. Now to do that, I just need any round hard object of a smaller diameter than the boiler. And then I can just carefully work it around like this. That'll keep the curve from getting any little kinks in it that you don't want there. And that shape should fit a lot better to the boiler. So to do these handrails, since they're solid brass and in a cast metal boiler, this makes it very easy to solder. So to start, I've only run the wire through these front two stanchions here. I'm gonna solder one at a time, and then once each side is done, I'll thread it through another, or thread another stanchion on there, put it into the hole, and then solder those in place. Now this brass has been around for a little while, so I'm putting a little bit of extra flux onto there just to help with the solder flow. Now I'll just put a little bit of solder onto the iron to help with heat transfer. 
And I'm starting with this end of the wire here. I have that just slightly behind the front of the smoke box. Keep that up. And touch just a little bit of solder on. That'll flow through the hole and you'll end up with a very nice and strong solder joint. And with that side soldered, I want to make sure the other side is lined up just right before I do the same for it. So I'll just correct the bend of this wire a little bit more. Of course, if it's not quite holding in place, then I can just uh, put a little more solder onto the tip of the iron and then use my other hand a few inches away to hold the wire and that'll let me at least get the solder joint started. And it looks like I've got a good strong joint there. So now I can move on to the next set of stanchions. Now along the way, there will start to be stanchions that don't want to stay in because the wire is pulling them out. So whenever you see that, you can make just a gentle bend at the last stanchion to make sure that things are going to insert and line up just the way they need to. So it's already looking better right there. And some of that is also just coming from the other end of the wire pulling out. Now at this point, the length of the wire is definitely set, so that can be trimmed down now. For this one, I'll make it so it sticks out just slightly further in the rear stanchion. Do the same for both sides. Make sure to save these pieces of wire because more of that will be needed later. All right, so the main handrail is now fully assembled and it's very easy to get too much solder onto some of the stanchions, but when that happens, there's nothing to worry about because it's actually really easy to clean off using some braided copper solder wick. So if you've never used that before, what you do first is put just a little bit of fresh solder onto your iron. It just kind of helps get things started. And you hold the braid over the part that you want to get the um, excess solder off of. And you hold that against it with the iron. Just give it some time to warm up. And now, most of the excess solder has been removed. And you can repeat as needed for any stanchions or if the wick wasn't able to soak up quite enough solder from one small point. There, now with that finished, I can gently take the main handrail back off. And this will make adding other details as well as painting and masking a whole lot easier. And as long as the soldering was done right and all of your joints are good and strong, the handrail will hold together just like this, so it can be painted and reinstalled very easily. The front handrail on the smoke box needs to be a half curve to fit in that area. So to make that, I'm using this piece of wire that came from the rest of the handrail wire. I'm going to start by bending it around the well, my screwdriver here has multiple diameters on the handle, which is helpful for this. So I'm starting by using the larger part of it to make a more gentle bend, just by working it around like that. So that's off to a good start, but now it needs to be tighter. So I'll move to the smaller diameter of the handle, and then just do the same thing, rolling it around there. It'll tighten the bend, but it also keeps it nice and clean. And yeah, let's see, that's getting close, but it still needs to be a little bit smaller. Okay, that looks good. That turned out well, so I'll just clip off the end there. Then I can take this railing back out for painting later. 
That's it for the details that I'll be assembling to the boiler. Although before painting, it's still a good idea to check the fit of other parts to make sure they'll be fine. And if anything needs their holes drilled out a little bit, then now would be the best time to do that. The frame also has a few detail parts to install, like of course the pilot, and then a couple other things around it. These pipes that go on the cylinders. And then there are also these caps that go on the ends of the cylinders. And all these cast parts need to be cleaned up a little bit. And for these here, since they're round, something that you can do to clean them up if you've got a motor tool, Dremel tool on hand, is mount them in the tool. Turn that on. And then using a bit of sandpaper, just to carefully sand that down. Make sure it's nice and smooth. There are some little rivet details around, so you want to be careful not to do anything to those. All right, that's getting there. Got to be careful not to sand off those uh, rivet details. There's just a little more to go on the middle, and then that'll be ready to use. And with the cleanup done, these just glue right into the front of the cylinder block. I think those turned out looking pretty good. All right, so the next thing to put on will be the pilot here. This part is already surprisingly clean. Just looking around it, I really don't need to do much to it. Just a little filing in the back. That smoothed right out. This is another white metal part. So it files down a lot quicker than the usual die cast parts from Bowser. Okay, and then drop the screw in here. And this fits right down to the front. And it screws in place just like that. It might have gotten that middle hole slightly off there from the look of it. I got that hole drilled slightly larger so that the screw can go through. So now for mounting that front air tank, you can instead use this uh, self-tapping screw, which is kind of unusual for Bowser to include this type. But it's another white metal part, so that should work fine. Just have to make sure that goes all the way through. So now the air tank fits right there in the front. It's not going through quite as easily as I had hoped, though. Right, so that self-tapping screw wasn't going in quite as easily as I would hoped, so what I'm going to do instead is start by putting a little oil at the front of the hole there. Then I'm going to tap this first, take the screw out, and then assemble it. So the oil will help the threads to cut through the metal a lot more easily. Now tighten that together. You do want to make sure that's straight while you're tightening it. Once it is, you can give it that last little bit of extra to make sure that it stays on there good and straight. And one more part, which may be optional. They provide a dummy front coupler, but you can of course use a working front coupler. I'll just mount the dummy one here though. That screws into the front of the pilot. There, and now the pilot is assembled. There are little drill markers that you can see along here. So these are for mounting additional detail parts like the uh, lift bar, uh, an extra grab handrail, maybe a couple other little things like, I think there are supposed to be a couple steps here possibly. And the last two detail parts to fit onto the pilot are these 
pipes that come up from the cylinders. These need just a little bit of filing. Not much. And once again, these are white metal, so that's very easy to file them down. These don't need to be too clean looking on the inside because that just fits up against the smoke box anyway and you'll never see it again. And real gently get that trimmed off of there. And if needed, finish that by sanding a little. That brass wire is pre-installed in the part by Bowser. That wasn't anything that I put in. So insert that into the cylinder. Making sure it's got a good flush fit. And as long as those are installed correctly, the boiler will be able to fit over it and the walkways will fit around it. And that has a good flush appearance to it. Now finishing off the assembly of the main engine, it's the two trucks here. So the front one and the rear one. I'm gonna start with the front truck. Okay, so this one is another white metal piece. As I've gone through this kit, seeing a lot more white metal parts than what I'm used to seeing on a Bowser, I remember that the development of this one came around the time that Bowser bought the leftover tooling from the from Arbor Models, which had just closed down. So I'm wondering if maybe they were experimenting a bit there using some of the uh, maybe mold technology and techniques that they got from them. So usually Bowser just sticks with the die cast and brass parts. White metal parts are a lot cheaper to develop than die cast, so that would make sense for them to give it a try. Look into some cost savings here and there, wherever they can find it, while still making decent parts. I'm glad they stuck with die cast for the main parts of this engine, like the frame, the boiler, and all that. For smaller things like this, White metal works perfectly fine as long as it's correctly made. It seems like they did an overall pretty good job here. Let's see. Both of the wheels on these axles are insulated. Let's see how the fit is there. Okay, so those do roll mostly. I think I do need to clean out those axle slots just a little bit though. So, similar to how I cleaned out the axle slots in the Arbor Models 040, just use a drill bit here of the size of the axle. And carefully go around there a little. All right, both slots are allowing the axle to roll freely. All they need is a little oil. Just a couple small drops will be enough here. Put the brass plate on. This is another case where I think adding some oil into the hole and tapping the screw before assembly will work out a lot better. Okay, the tapping's done, so let's try this again. Axle goes in there. Yeah, that's much better. For parts like this, preparation really does make all the difference. I do need to clean that slot out a little bit though. So I'll use a round file for the ends and the flat file for the front and back. Just want to make sure that that can move around easily. And that looks like it's all good. So now I can get on to installing the front truck. And it was actually missing the 256 one inch long screw for putting that together. So I had to order another one that put a bit of a delay on the project. But anyway, now I've got that. Once in a while, a part is missing like that. And fortunately, when it's a screw, you can just order new ones because bows are used the standard sizes in most areas. So I've got the uh, brass tube and washer on there. Now put that through the truck. Now another washer. 
and then the spring. One more washer. And that fits underneath just like that. And this will also hold the body in place. Just now tighten that down. I'm checking now and then to make sure that it doesn't tighten down on top of the truck slot. Okay, just go a bit further. And now that's installed and the body is held tightly in place. And when installed correctly, the front truck will sit just below the drive wheels. And that allows it to kind of push up like that and have some tension against the track. Now, assembly of the rear truck should be pretty much the same as the front. Looks like another white metal casting. It looks like the axle rolls freely in this one, which is good. It means I won't have to find a way to file or drill that slot out, which would have been frustrating. And these wheels are plastic, so no grounding to worry about. I'll just uh, start by making sure that this hole is threaded for the screw. Let's see which one is used here. Oh, actually, it looks like this one is tapped for the 256. Makes it easier. So I'll just oil that since it's already rolling freely. Looks good. Almost forgot to check if there was any flash. <laughs> Just a little bit back here. Overall, this is a very clean casting. Now let's see. They must have had a little mix up when they were putting the uh, hardware package together in here. Well, I do make sure to keep some extra 256 screws around. Common size in HO scale. You never know where you'll need them. At least I didn't have to order a replacement screw like I did with the front truck. It's really very unusual for a Bowser kit to be missing any parts like this. But at least screws are easy to change out and replace. Okay, that looks good. So now, um, see just a little bit of flash there, file that off. So now that will go here with those two holes aligned. And then these flat headed screws will go in through the top. Okay, that's the assembly of the rear truck finished. And this screw holds it in place. And as for installing it, it goes right here in that last rear hole. And of course, you won't be able to get to the uh, rear motor screw once that's in place, so you definitely want to make sure the motor adjustments are done before putting on the rear truck. Now, all that's done at least, so let's move on to the tender.